Hey guys, welcome back to Main Cave. I know it's been a while since my last video, uh, but thanks very much for sticking in with me. The last video I made was the repair of this Dextromix 2201 scope, and uh, at the end of the video I found that there was, a, there was an issue with it, and I thought potentially a horizontal, that's what it looked like anyway, uh, potentially a horizontal board. And um, during the preparation for, for this video I was putting this together um, into one piece again, and um, I thought I put all you know I put it all together with the uh, digital board and everything. And as I was doing so, um, I noticed uh, there are two connections on the side, uh, two little wire connections, and those two were actually well one of them was actually um, connected backwards. So the wire uh, pin one was on pin six uh, in the connector, and uh, so I swapped it back to pin one, and. As you can see, now it works very well. Um, how well? Uh, well, we'll have a look. Um, hopefully we do a little bit of calibration today if it needs it. Um, hopefully, uh, today is going to be the last video um, for the repair and calibration of this scope. And then I'll get on uh, making some more content. So here's one of these, uh, one of these two cables here um, that was uh, plugged in wrong way around. But luckily, that was it. So luckily all the scope needed was just to repair the power supply. And now it's working. Um, as you can see, it's got quite a nice sharp display. There you go. Very nice. I also gave it a, a bit of a clean. I haven't put in all the buttons for uh, for the digital board, but I'll do that as soon as we calibrate the analog part. I literally just thrown it together to see whether the digital board would make any difference at all. So let's have a look at whether it actually needs calibration or not. Okay, so I'm just going to do some initial checks. I've got a signal generator connected, uh, but I'm going to take it off and connect as per uh, the service manual. Um, also connect the secondary scope just to double check every setting to make sure I'm cross checking my um, signal generator. Okay, so the setup is, I've got a signal generator, output to the scope, 50 ohm termination, and I have a secondary scope um, just to check, uh, to cross check my signal generator uh, to make sure that the output um, levels and um, the frequency and everything is correct. Um, so, um, first what I'm going to do is just uh, quickly run through some checks, and make sure that uh, the amplitude is correct. Um, Although I can see already that it's slightly bigger. Alright, so as you can see, it is slightly too much at the bottom here. Um, it's not major, <laughs> we could probably live with it, but you know, we can adjust it, why wouldn't we? So uh, we'll probably have a look at uh, adjusting that a little bit. So to check the horizontal accuracy, um, I've set my signal gen to 1 MHz. I set the, ver the horizontal to half a microsecond per division, and I'm just going to adjust the position of the of the left edge to be exactly on the line. I'm sorry, I'll try and focus. There we go. Okay, so adjust the left edge to be exactly on the line. So if you look at the bottom right there you can see and that's perfectly aligned with the left with the left side and then if we look at the right hand side here we can see that there is a slight deviation there so we need to stretch that out a little bit again I, I think it may well be in spec uh, but you can see here as well it's, it's uh, not too good um, so yeah we will we'll have a look at it and align that as well. We can check the bandwidth. So I've set the um, signal gen to one kilohertz sine wave amplitude 388 millivolts peak to peak, uh, 380 millivolts to match the bottom and top uh, of the screen of the scope. So that's eight div eight divisions, and I'll just keep uh, winding up the frequency on the signal generator until 
uh, the amplitude uh, drops to minus 3 dB um, so that would be 5.7 uh, divisions or until I run out of frequency because this is only 25 uh, megahertz uh, signal generator so uh, I'll start winding up um, I'll actually switch it straight to uh, 1 megahertz because yeah, I know that it will definitely have at least 1 megahertz bandwidth and then I'll just keep going up 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20 megahertz. Um, so we know that the scope can at least achieve 20 megahertz uh, bandwidth, which is uh, the bandwidth of the scope. And then we continue 1, 2, 3, 4, uh, 25 megahertz. And unfortunately, that's the limit of my signal generator, uh, but we're still well uh, within. Um, our normal bandwidth uh, so we haven't reached the minus 3 dB uh, therefore uh, the bandwidth is okay so it seems that the scope only needs minor adjustment I haven't actually, actually checked the digital, bo uh, digital board at this stage um, just checking the basic uh, analog functionality and it seems okay um, I'll do the same check on the second channel um, and then we have a look at uh, actually adjusting it so that's one kilohertz uh, sine wave on the second channel, pretty much spot on um, height wise. I'm going to adjust the channel one variable balance. Um, so that's when you move the uh, the variable balance control uh, that the traces move. At the moment, you can see that channel one moves and channel two moves as well. So to do that, uh, we need to uh, channel 1 5 millivolts per division, half a millisecond per division. Uh, we need to switch the trigger all to external. At least that's what the manual says. And move the variable control on channel 1. Let's switch to channel 1 first, that would be helpful. Move the variable control all the way to the left. Then adjust the trace to be directly on the center reticule. And then we adjust the R33, which is that one there, until the line does not move. So we're aligned. So here we go. We'll align this right to the center. Then I move the variable control back to the detent. And then I'm gonna adjust the R33 like so. Perfect. And now I'm going to check that, it's, that it works well. So I'm going to move that out again, all the way counterclockwise, and back all the way to the detent. Move just slightly. I don't know if it's worth messing around with that. I'll just try and adjust it a tiny bit lower. Oh, it's very touchy. Very, very touchy. Let's see if that does the job. Oh, well, it's going the other way now. Counterclockwise, clockwise. But really, this is just uh, perfectionism in me. It really doesn't matter. I'll move it slightly back up. There you go, it's almost perfect. I can leave with that. We'll do it on channel 2. 
Uh, the channel 2. I'm going to just switch that one to channel 2 now. I'll move this all the way counterclockwise. You can see that it's moved down quite a bit. And channel 2 is R84. Let me find it. Would expect that to be somewhere close. I can see R83, which is there. Um, hmm. So I've checked the service manual, and the R84 is actually on the front panel board, which is right there. So I'm going to adjust that one. We we'll adjust the channel to completely counterclockwise on the variable control use the position control to move it smack in the middle and then adjust the R84 oh, I've got one step I need to move it back fully clockwise and then adjust the R84 once I catch oh there we go adjust that to bring it back on the center gratitude line I start here is one okay now we double check so I'm going to move Whoa. Uh, let's see what this does so that's fully counterclockwise and that's fully clockwise so not quite there so again fully counterclockwise bring it back in the middle Whoa. And then fully clockwise. And bring it with the R84 at the back of the front panel. Bring that back in the middle. And essentially we just need to repeat this until the trace does not move when you when you change the variable control. Come on. Oh. Alright, let's see. Oh no. It moves down and back back up. I'm not sure what's the thing with this. Let's try and move it down a little bit. Let's see what it does. I think I'll leave it there. Alright, I'll leave it there. Okay, so I'm going to adjust the vertical gain. Uh, where, if you remember, we had a problem on channel 1, a uh, minor problem, um, where it was um, just slightly too high. And so, what we need to do first is just bring this down right down to the center now switch to DC coupling and we have a 20 millivolt uh, peak to peak and we're just over so what I'm going to do is I'm going to adjust the R145 which is right out on the side uh, oh, it's this one there this one right underneath there to bring the vertical gain right down where it should be oh that's a bit touchy as well right let's have a little bit more fiddle have to give it a little bit clean as well I'll just wipe up and down a little bit up and down 
clean it up. But it seems to be a bit dusty in there. So back down. That's it. Spot on. Now we do the same for channel two. Channel two. So channel one to ground. Channel two is on ground. Adjust the position of channel two to be exactly where it should be. Uh, which it is. Um, I have to display channel two as well. That would help. So adjust to channel two. Nice spot on. Change the coupling to DC. And channel two is pretty much there to be honest. I don't think it needs any adjustment at all. I'll bring it slightly further down. Yeah, that's fine. I'm happy with that. Right, so next we need to adjust the uh, horizontal the time base so the service manual says one kilohertz uh, markers um, we don't have a marker generator but what we have is a uh, pulse uh, which we can set uh, to one microsecond pulse width and that will give us nice markers you can see and if we position the left marker as it is directly on the very left side reticule you can see on the right hand side that is slightly off so what we need to do is adjust the sorry for shading myself the trim pot here R744 so that the markers are on their own graticule. So we'll just turn that. No, that seems good. Let's just move this a little bit. There we go. Happy with that. Marker per graticle. Now we adjust the 10 times. So we do we switch to 10 times and uh, position the marker to the left. And we can see both markers there. So we just position that one on the left graticule and we can see that the right one is completely off um, so we just adjust the R777 sorry R what is it uh, yeah R777 which is right there at the back adjust that to bring that marker right to the end And uh, now we readjust the first marker. With the horizontal position control and that one disappeared. So again with the R777. Now I'll let you watch the whole thing. we 
moving back so what it seems like uh, rather than positioning one on the marker and moving the other one with our triple seven uh, I'm gonna try and position them both equidistant from each other and then adjust the R777 to bring them together because they seem to be moving both at the same time that's it yep that's it Now have a look at a 10 microsecond timing, so we have um, horizontal in 10 microsecond position and we have 10 microsecond period um, pulses. So if we just align this. So that is fine, that is spot on. Uh, now 5 microsecond timing, so we change that to 5 and we change that to 5 as well. We adjust that. Oh, this one seems slightly off. Let's do it properly. Come on. There you go, so I've adjusted the first one right there, and the last one is off, so according to service manual it's C703, which is that cap there. So you just adjust that up by the way. Perfect. Spot on. And that's it really. So uh, it's calibrated, I just need to put it back together. And uh, once it's done, then I can do some other videos. And uh, if you're interested, if you like the video, please give it a thumbs up. And if, uh, if you'd like to uh, see any more of my videos, and please subscribe. And, um, you get notification anytime I release a new video. Thanks very much uh, for watching the video and sticking with me. And uh, I'll see you next time. Bye.